All righty. Okay. Well, the first thing on the agenda, well, first of all, well, we've been talking, but obviously, welcome back. It, it, it's hard to say welcome back because we've been back for a while, but welcome <laughs> back to, to the first um, faculty meeting of, uh, of the academic year. Okay. So first thing on the agenda, that just turned blank for me, but it, it's the review of the agenda and approval of the minutes. So the minutes were sent out. Sharon, I don't know what happened. It's all blank now. Uh oh. Okay. Is that you? Yep. There. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Anyways, the minutes were sent out. I don't know how many of you all have had a chance, but if there's at least one of you who could make a motion to approve and then we need a second. I'll move to approve move the agenda. agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda and the minutes. And second. Thank oh, you. Thank you. All right, that was Jay Feeney and Jacqueline Romano. Thank you so much. Okay, is there any discussion or anything? No, okay. Does anybody care? This no, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, good news is we have our new program specialist for our EDD program in educational leadership. Her name is Stacy Ortiz. And Stacy, you're on here, I, I assume, right? Are you yes, on here? I'm here. <laughs> okay, so Stacy, there you go. Um, the platform is yours. Introduce yourself and <laughs> tell us about what we need, you know, tell us about stuff. <laughs> okay, I'll <laughs> tell you about stuff. Uh, my name is Stacy Ortiz. Um, I started working here um, October 3rd, so I have about two weeks now and um, already have completed a few items. Um, so we opened um, a new advisor page. So if students are interested in, say, uh, office hours with me or um, space for uh, writing their dissertation, like a, a virtual space, or just any writing project we have already, um, we're gonna be starting that next week. So all this information, announcements, uh, pertaining to the program and in terms of advising, they're going to be housed in the advising. Um, could you, uh, feature. I wonder if, if Sharon stops sharing for a moment, you can share your screen and you can maybe guide us. Okay. Cause I, cause I, you know, you, cause you send out announcements to the students, but as faculty, we're not on every, um, email right, right. distribution. Right. Yeah. And we don't want to bombard everybody with that stuff either. <laughs> so um, let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and um, get in there and let me see if I can share my screen right now. So yeah, so um, so essentially what I did is I, I just, um, it was, um, let me see if I can share, share screen. But maybe give us a little bit about your background as well and your experience. So, um, okay, so do you see my screen? Yes. Yep. So, uh, so this is our page and we edited where, with my information here, um, but then we also have for active, uh, for current students, we just go here. Um, and then um, this first tab, we created this um, advising um, uh, link block. And then this takes us to this page where we have the virtual office hours where they can either click on it to get to the virtual office hours or just do their, um, use the QR code or hear the biweekly writing uh, <laughs> development series where uh, it's the point here is to a virtual space for students to have, um, to be held accountable for writing. So this is a good space here. Um, so this is what I've been working on for a, uh, the last couple of weeks, but um, a little about myself is that uh, I've worked here uh, since 2019, but I am also a um, alumni. I received my my both my bachelor's and my master's in uh, psychology from Cal State San Bernardino. And I'm currently uh, in candidacy. I'm working on my doctoral, um, on my dissertation right now from the University of Redlands. Uh, I hope to propose uh, soonish, hopefully by the end of the month or mid uh, November. It really all depends on how fast my uh, chair gives me my three chapters back. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, other than that, I, so I'm actively working um, uh, on my dissertation as a student, and then I'm also working for the doctoral program. So uh, there is really no other type of fire than this. I am. I feel like I need to just get this going so that I, I don't feel like an imposter, like advising doctoral students, and I'm writing my dissertation still. So, 
I will get there, hopefully by the end of the year. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about, about me. Very good. Okay, so we're we're um, happy Stacy is with us, and um, and of course you know uh, we missed Audrey for the last few months, but the good thing about Audrey is that she was very um, good at keeping records. So between all of us and the records that we uh, last year we started a campaign mm -hmm. to just like organize ourselves. And so it, it, it's made it a lot easier for Stacy to just jump in because we already have a, a things in momentum in motion. So thank you, Stacy. <clears throat> yep, we're real happy to have her on board. So um, welcome, Stacy. So the next thing on the agenda are um, celebrations and congratulations. So um, congratulations, Enrique. He's been appointed to a White House uh, Committee on um, Education. We're can you get Biden here? <laughs> I'm going to try, but, but if not, I'll, I'll try to get uh, Jill. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, because Jill go. Jill goes on, uh, does things, and she's got an EDD as well. Yep. So yep. Probably, maybe we could do an EDD program with yep. our EDD and then bring her. Yeah. Um, congratulations to Nancy, who was promoted to professor. All right, Carmen, Nancy. Yes, yay, Nancy. So, um, Nancy, Carmen don't forget the little people. Don't forget the little people. <laughs> Yeah. Carmen was appointed as assistant professor. Um, Victor right, Wang Carmen. published a text with a um, video that goes along with it. And um, we, I sent out an announcement uh, and showed everybody what that is. Um, congratulations to Andrew Hughes, who is on sabbatical this semester. So um, I don't know if I missed anybody, but um, you know we have very active faculty and congratulations to everybody. Yeah, so. Well, we did have a little success with a you know brand new five year contract at slightly over fifty million dollars. Oh my yay. god! Oof. Great, great. I haven't I haven't seen the announcement or nothing or or maybe I missed it. They talked That's about huge. it at um, convocation and at but uh, CSRI was renewed for five more years. That's, it was okay. also expanded to now a little over $10 million a year. Right, wow. wow, fantastic. And I just heard yesterday that King is now the um, chair of the IRB a review board. So congratulations to King. I just learned that Thank yesterday. You. Thank you. Oh. Now Jacqueline is, I don't know if Jacqueline is still a member of the IRB. Yes, I am. Very good. good. So we have two people there. Yep. How many people are, are on that committee, Jacqueline or King? Oh, 11 members. Mm -hmm. How many? 11. 11. 11. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. Right. So the next thing we wanted to share with you was the end of the year report. And I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and share the end of the year report. I think we did send it out. Um, hold on, let me find it. <clears throat> but it really itemizes all the things that we um, that we accomplished last year. And sometimes you forget about all the work that you've done. And um, let's see where the here it is. We thought we would just share um, a little bit of it uh, with it with you. So um, because we were really busy last year. Um, we're, our program was responsible for getting uh, R2 classification for the university because we're the only doctoral program um, in, on the campus. Um, we also were able to get standalone status so we're no longer in a department. We report particularly to or specifically to the dean. Um, we did adopt a new syllabus format. So when you teach a course in this program, you should be using the newly adopted um, doctoral program syllabus format, and that was our policy committee that um, formulated that. And then our home scholar program, um, we had two members attend a number of conferences and we now have a couple of more members. Um, Stacy, do you wanna talk a little bit about the, oh, you, you, you're not real or, familiar. I, with the, I just sent out, yeah. I just sent out uh, uh, the uh, release about tw half hour ago. So everybody should have gotten it. Um, it, uh, we have uh, Silesh uh, Maharjan, 
and Audrey M Milan. And they're both from cohort 16. And, mm -hmm. um, and so just to, as a refresher, our, um, our homes program, it's under, it's uh, with resources from the American Association of Colleges for uh, Teacher Education, AACTE. And um, it's to provide mentorship, peer support, and professional development opportunities um, to scholars. Um, in particular, uh, the focus is um, doctoral students traditionally underserved in higher education. And um, last year was our inaugural year as a member of this. And we were, uh, our program was the first um, uh, public university in California to be accepted. And we were the first uh, program housed at a CSU to be accepted of this kind of prestigious uh, program. So uh, last year, in our inaugural year, we selected two. And then now this year, we have the additional two. Mm -hmm. the, the previous two, they don't go away. They stay on. So it's four all together now. And um, uh, they were not able to attend the AACTE conference this year because of our policy, travel, travel policies. Um, I can't remember where, but you know, there's certain states that we don't travel to. Um, and um, long story short, they are participating along with the faculty uh, director, which is Karen Escalante, um, uh, at the, uh, the, C the CCTE uh, conference, the California chapter of the AACTE. Yeah. So um, that's, that's a, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful program and the students are just having a great experience and they're meeting state legislators and it's just really, um, it's been a great experience for them. Um, our homecoming, we had our first homecoming alumni event last year and it was a big success. And this year we have it again coming up this Saturday and you're all invited. Um, if you have an RSVP, please do, because we have to make reservations for food. And um, Dr. Edwin Gomez is going to be our speaker for the uh, for the event. Um, and and um, we got a band coming in. the The theme is uh, Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, and we're excited about it. We have nearly a hundred people already RSVP but we have room for 120. So please, if you have an RSVP, come on down on a Saturday, bring family and friends. And um, it, it's gonna be uh, informal. It's not like a formal, we, anything, you know, just come and have fun. And it's, uh, and there'll be other homecoming activities taking place in the afternoon and evening. So uh, you can come for this and then stick around for as long as you want during the rest of the day. <clears throat> and last year we had a successful call for new faculty and you'll find listed um, who are our new um, faculty recruits. And we did say goodbye to a number of faculty through retirements or leaving and we're sorry to see them go, but we wish them all the best. Um, we had last year for the first time a full day uh, orientation for cohort 15. That was the, uh, this was the agenda. Um, it was a very successful um, orientation. We also had the orientation for 16 this year in July, a little earlier than we have it had in the previous because, and we'll talk about that later, but it, the full day um, orientation seems to work really, really well and helps get them gelled and um, really functioning as a working cohort. And these were kind of uh, the, the, on the scale of one to four, one to five. These were the evaluation means. <clears throat> we also last year held a faculty retreat as for um, CPED and we had um, Jill um, Perry come to speak with us at that meeting. And um, we do have a subcommittee on CPED. We are having, a, there is a CPED conference coming up. And so we, uh, we plan to attend virtually. Uh, let's see, we had several of our students participated in the annual graduate student research symposium and um, here's the recordings of their presentations. 
the community advisory board met last year in December, and we really had a nice turnout and a, and a nice discussion about the um, focus of our programs. And then we had, and then um, we decided to hold off a few months for the next one, but in, you'll get the announcement. In, but in February is the next uh, community advisory board meeting. Um, both Enrique and I attended the CSU EDD directors meeting, and the next one is this coming Friday, and I'm planning to attend. I don't know, Enrique, are you attending that? Or yeah, that? but I'm 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 going to be out of the country, yeah. but I I'm going to uh, may Zoom for my yeah. For my don't phone. worry about it. I'll be there, so no worries. Okay, thank you. Um, we had the student advising, and we've been doing it. Um, on one night where students slot in to meet with us by Zoom. And so these were the dates where we had individual appointments set for different cohort members. And those are all the dates. And we do it, we also do other advising when um, students need some additional um, assistance. Mm -hmm. And something that we've been doing since last year is that as a program, all four of us are meet with the student. So we can have a more holistic approach instead of just one by one, all four of us are there so we can tackle the different aspects of the program, like a one-stop shopping experience for the student where we just, everything's right there. <clears throat> um, last year was the first time we administered the new qualifying exam. Um, and we, before we did the exam, we had a seminar for the students to try to get them prepared so they knew what to expect for the seminar. Um, everybody passed, not everybody got the highest scores, but everybody did pass the qualifying exam that sat for it. Um, and the student feedback about the qualifying exam was that they felt that it was um, a, a chance for them to show that they could uh, demonstrate how they would use what they learned in everyday mm -hmm. practice. So the, the comments about the new qualifying exam were really very positive. And, and they were, they felt empowered, like, oh, wow, I've really, I really learned uh, something about what does equity look like, you know, uh, in, the, in, and, the you know in real life, in practice. What does equity look like in practice? What does leadership look like in practice? And then uh, as a result, all of those students advanced to candidacy, which is the first time in the history of the program that we've had all students, uh, I think all but two in that cohort advanced to candidacy within the first year and a half of the program. So that was a um, pretty big achievement. Yeah. And so now that they're advanced to candidacy, we can then pass them on to, the, to you all as faculty, but you don't have to worry about getting them through the qualifying exam like you did previously with the previous cohort, now you can just jump into the business of the dissertation. <clears throat> um, we held two dissertation seminars uh, last year. One was for cohort 14 um, and uh, then a, a separate one for cohort 15. And we've adopted the, the curriculum committee um, designed because we're not offering those courses that we used to offer dissertation seminars. We're doing them independently on a one night basis. Um, so far, um, Becky did one of them and Do um, Nancy's gonna do the second one. So the second one's uh, about to come up at the end of this semester, I believe. And so we're, we're doing dissertation, dissertation seminars. They're not quite as um, um, extensive as they were when they were courses, but at least the students are getting some assistance um, with their dissertations in these seminars. And um, there was a, I included the evaluation of the seminars. Um, there's just some other things here. They had, we had the meet the faculty event. We had the get, get finished weekly meetings. Commencement was in the spring. We had 13 students uh, graduate in the spring. Um, and faculty governance, you all met Last year, the curriculum design and assessment committee met regularly. The policy committee re met regularly. Um, membership met several times to um, try to recruit new faculty. And then the um, admissions committee met, met over the summer and we admitted our students. So just take a you know, look at it. I think we really accomplished a lot last year and we wanted to let the president and the dean and everybody know you know, how hard everybody on this uh, EDD faculty is working. So we did submit it to them so that they have an idea that we're, we're working really hard. Everybody is working hard. 
Okay, any questions? Okay, move on to admissions and year end update. Where's Joseph when you need when you need a question? Oh, didn't hear it. Sorry. No, I said no. I was making a joke. I said, "Where's oh. Joseph when you need a question?" <laughs> I just want to congratulate everybody. Uh, thank you for the report, Sharon. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Uh, is, is my screen sharing? I can't tell. Yes. And so you can see the agenda. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. All right. So um, we're going to move on to um, admissions. So we had, um, we admitted 25 students last year, but only 20 ended up um, attending the program. And as I mentioned before, we did do a full day orientation. Um, and this year we incorporated something called the Administrator Disposition Survey. It's gonna be a pre and post survey. So they take this survey and it, it's a self-analysis of their dispositions as leaders. Um, and then when they leave the program, we're gonna have them their last semester, we're gonna have them redo it. And then we're gonna do a comparison of their self-awareness of their dispositions before the program and their awareness of their dispositions afterwards. We also have their supervisors fill out a very similar form and we compared them. Um, and this year it was significantly different. The, um, the uh, fact that students, the, their bosses or their peers, that was not their peers, it'd be their supervisors, um, actually rated them higher than they rated themselves. And it was a significant difference. So um, we will also um, assess the uh, supervisors at the end and we'll do a comparison and see how much things change between when they started the program and when they ended the program. So <clears throat> we've been collecting that data. This is our second year for collecting that data. And of course we use that for our um, learning outcomes. And speaking of learning outcomes, um, I think we sent you the report on um, our professional learning outcomes. Let me stop sharing this and share with you the professional learning. They're actually, they're in your- um, In the collateral, the packet for today's yeah, meeting. they're in your packet. Let's see At the end find. of the syllabus. Now, yeah. let me try to find that again. I can't find my share of the share screens. <clears throat> so this is the, um, can you see the PLO report? Yes. Okay. So we measured four um, learning objectives last year. And if you look at this report, you can see it, all the uh, measures that we used and the outcomes. Um, and I think there's recommendations at the end of each one for how, uh, what we would um, like to see continue to happen, but basically it's to continue to administer the disposition survey. We had a town hall meeting um, and we uh, have students react to inquiry questions where they talk about how well this program's preparing them for their career and how, it, how well it's meeting their expectations. So we include that data in here. Um, application to practice or theory to practice, we, um, we use the uh, outcome of the qualifying exam because it's a professional practice exam. So I have information there about that. And then our um, scholar leaders, um, we looked at, um, what, what data did we collect? We um, looked at the dissertation seminars, and we looked at the completion, the some uh, dissertation rubrics. Um, and so it, it's still in progress, but we would we would we recommend really con um, continuing doing everything that we're doing to measure these. Mm -hmm. But we really need to beef up <laughs> and think of create uh, more creative ways in which we can um, demonstrate theory into practice. Right, and that, that that's the main thing. We're okay. We can do the theory, but what does that mean in practice? And that's where we need to uh, improve and be more creative. Okay, I think that's 
The next thing is homecoming events. Okay, so we we talked about it already. I guess we typed about it already. Um, the homecoming already. Um, Saturday, twelve to three. Uh, we have a band coming in. The, actually, the band's going to start a half hour early because they're so we might as well. So while we're people are arriving, the band's already going to be playing. Um, we have um, President Morales is going to come and be uh, our uh, give the campus welcome. We also have the provost is going to be in attendance. We also have uh, um, uh, uh, Vice President Nava to talk about uh, the campaign, the uh, fundraising campaign that's tied into the homecoming event. And then our alumni speaker, as was mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, is uh, Dr. Uh, Edwin Gomez our, um, our, from cohort four. And he is currently he currently serves as the superintendent of Riverside County um, uh, Schools. And then what else? Uh, we're gonna have prizes. We're gonna have games. We're we're gonna take photos. <laughs> so, and Carmen's bringing her class, right, Carmen? All right. Which cohort was Ed uh, Edwin in? Was he one or two? Four. Two, I believe. I believe he was in two. <clears throat> okay. Um, we did the dissertation chair. Um, information session it was uh, on this week on the 17th and we had pretty good turnout for that thank you everybody um and now i've we distributed the dissertation chair handbook so please take a look at it and it's divided by cohorts 13 and before and cohorts 14 and beyond so it'll be it has a table of contents it should be easy for you to you know just use it to um when you're advising students if you have questions so um, I did distribute it earlier today, and I want to thank everybody that gave me feedback on it. It was um, it was a good feedback. Uh, let's see, winter commencement. We, Catherine, do you want to talk about winter commencement? Uh, we have um, one one graduate. It's um, uh, Rebecca Monroe from cohort nine. So she graduated this uh, semester. Ooh. Yay. Oh, and I see I skipped cohort 15. The qualifying exam date is December the 10th. So um, if you taught a core course this year, last year, please get me your questions. We're going to, we can't use the same questions every year, but we can put together and make a bank. So I think for the first two to three years, if you give me different questions, we can put them in the bank and then we can rotate and you won't have to write questions every year but I do need those questions. I'm, I have to distribute them to the students on November the 10th. So um, I, I, Doris, I think I already have yours. Um, a couple of them I already have, but if I don't have them, please get them to me because I have to uh, make sure that they're in the right format and then give them to the students. I ha actually have to randomly select four and then send four out for each pre-K 12 and higher ed. They each are randomly selected four to study. And then again, I have to randomly select three for each student to actually answer. So um, I need those questions pretty soon, by before November 10th. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, please mark your calendars for November 16th. We're gonna be having a faculty retreat and everybody um, is, we'd love everybody to be there, but particularly the faculty who have taught courses, because we're going to go through our curriculum. Um, Angela Lope did a really nice um, matrix of where our um, program learning outcomes are included. And we also want to look at our curriculum where the lap, gaps and overlaps um, exist between our courses in our curriculum. I mean, I did this one time at one of the programs and found out that two different courses were using the same books and covering the same material. So this is a chance for us to really dig into what's being taught in the courses, each of the courses, and make sure that we're not, that we don't have gaps and that we address any overlaps. And we decide, you know, what really should be in each class. And it's a faculty exercise. So it's the faculty who make that determination. Um, so we'll, we, it will be, um, 
all day we'll, we will have um, a breakfast and, and lunch. And it should be a very interesting day and it should be very, um, it should really help the program. So please try to mark your calendar and try to attend that meeting. So that's what was on our agenda. Is there, are there any other and then I have I have one thing under, under okay. other, but I need to share Good. my screen. Okay, I'll, I'll stop sharing if I can find it, okay. Okay, so as of a few days ago, we are proud to announce, and I'll, I'll think I'll send out an announcement tomorrow um, uh, that we have our new YouTube channel for the doctoral program. So hopefully you can see what I'm sharing here. So, um, so I'll send out an announcement, but we want you to please subscribe. And if you subscribe, you'll get notices when new videos appear. So if we go here, we have our all our um, we have all our playlists set up. So here is uh, anytime there's a program distinction or announcement or something. So here it is when we turn into uh, designated R two. Here he is. Uh, here it is when we join the um, homes. Right, you're going to be able to see last year's homecoming alumni mixer, and then the two virtual ceremonies that we held during COVID. Here in this uh, playlist, you're going to be able to see meetings like today's. Um, they're going to be available for you to watch on demand. So if you want to go back and watch anything. So um, uh, a couple nights ago, we had the uh, dissertation seminar um, that Sharon mentioned. So that's going to go right here. And you're going to be able to see here uh, last year's dissertation seminar, our meet and greet. Uh, we have our uh, community advisory meeting and our uh, the dissertation seminar for the students so that the students can go back and watch on demand as well. Then we have a bunch of nice videos that we found that have to do uh, with perspectives of educational leadership. Then we have a whole section here of uh, people differentiate between uh, uh, EDD versus PhD. This is the question that we get asked most often. Um, oh, I don't know, if, I don't remember if Sharon mentioned this, but we do every week, we have information sessions. Um, and so that's almost always, uh, there's always a, a need for clarification. What is EDD? What is PhD? Those kinds of things. So anyways, we have a, a, a nice videos here. We've picked out some nice videos that we think are very uh, representative of the conceptual, theoretical, and analytical frameworks we use in the field of education. We have um, fundamentals of qualitative, and fundamentals of quantitative. And then we have um, whenever uh, you all, please send me anything you have that's related to, um, oh, hold on, Nancy, I'm almost done. You have your hand up or you took it down? Okay. Uh, anything that's related to like, you all have announcements, videos, send it along. Um, for example, King, um, uh, oh no, was it Victor, Victor Wang, um, for this, uh, the, the new book that came out, Educational Leadership. We found these old videos from like 10 years ago that I was able to upload. Um, and there's Jay from nine years ago. If you want to see Jay nine years ago. Uh, anyways, Nancy, you had a question? No, you answered it. That was my question that if we have our own YouTube videos that we've been recorded in lectures and stuff. Yes. I think so that students know what to expect or just have information. Yes, if you have anything, we can house it here. Okay. Although I would suggest house it also in your own space. Um, but um, because, you know, YouTube is kind of fickle, something happened, you know, I don't know. They can, they YouTube reserves the right to shut you down at any time, right? So, uh, but yeah, we can, uh, if, if, if it's related to like a class, or if it fits any of these categories already, or we can create a brand new playlist. Um, like for example, uh, around the, the things that you, around the courses that you teach about 
equity in practice. What does equity look like in practice and those kinds of stuff? We can have a playlist that has, you know, has that. Yeah, one thing that as you were talking, I, I forgot to mention in our orientation this year for our new students, we gave them a number of videos, required videos related to research that they were supposed to um, complete watch uh, and complete before they had the um, inquiry course, research inquiry course. Um, so after um, Nancy's finished teaching that course, we're going to go back and see if it made a difference between yeah. their preparedness. But that was uh, that was something we added to the orientation. Yeah. And most of those videos are found under these three sec playlists. Yeah. Conceptual, the qual and the quant. And I mean, at the, at the risk of them saying, oh, you're just giving us videos. But the thing is, as you know, we just don't have enough um, courses where, uh, where we can diversify enough because we had more courses under the quarter system and now we're in the semester system. And so the, we figured this is maybe one way to help the students um, get exposed to different perspectives. Um, plus um, we do have, even though the majority of our students are, we think are well socialized in the field of education, um, we do have uh, maybe maybe ten percent of our students um, they they don't have um, thank you Susan they don't have uh, they're not well socialized in the field of education they're they're educational leaders in the broad sense um, but uh, they need to be better socialized and you know so that was um, our agenda, but there's an other on there and we'd like to hear from you or there's some things you'd like to see us do or do you have questions for us or comments about the program? Uh, what? Can I speak, please? Sure. Uh, additional things I would like to see would be more integration with um, particularly the resources on campus. Many of the many of our students, uh, those in my department, and I'm sure this will apply to our EDD students. Some of them may not be from here. There are a lot of uh, support services uh, on campus, but I'm not sure that students are aware of them, including um, if one of them um, is uh, having problem with housing. Is uh, uh, having problem with uh, sa sa you just lose your job. You need some money for the semester to keep you going. All those kind of uh, support services are available that um, students generally mm -hmm. don't uh, know. So thank you, Let's just see. Thank you for bringing that up. And we did just um, talk about something similar to that, and that was with um, the uh, graduate uh, writing studio. And um, as soon as the uh, next week, as soon as our um, alumni um, homecoming thing is over, um, Stacy's going to be meeting with um, that. But I think we can extend that into other services as well. So thank you for that suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, actually, Lacisi, if you can, I'm sure the university has a site that you can suggest. So all we can do is we can add that to our EDD page okay. and then familiarize ourselves with it. Okay. Um, but the good thing is that uh, Stacy previously served as the advisor for, what was your caseload, uh, Stacy? <laughs> Tell them a little bit about your caseload before. So my caseload, I had about 5,000 students for the College of Natural Sciences. I was the academic advisor. We were also, we served as triage to um, if the students needed any type of uh, services from campus. So we would find the resources that they needed as long as they came to talk to us and then we would refer them to the appropriate party. So for example, if there's any need for like housing, we can refer them to um, the department of, um, it's called CARE on campus that we can refer them to and then they analyze the situation and then they see uh, what resources the student needs. So uh, anytime a student has any uh, any needs from the EDD program, they can come to me and I will find the appropriate party.
Any other comments or questions? Victor? Yes, uh, I, I have a question for you, Enrico. Um, how can I uh, post materials via doctoral uh, Facebook? I know how to post a link, but I've been trying to post some useful materials for doctoral students. Um, so am I allowed to do so or? Yeah, well, um, it's uh, you're so it's it's more we can talk separately if you want to, but you're more familiar with Facebook. Yes, I have my own Facebook. And oh, okay, I, yeah, because yeah. I I see that you respond to our Facebook. Yes, and so and almost I, every day we try to post something on Facebook. We have Facebook and we Instagram, and now we've added the YouTube. Um, yeah, each faculty has their own uh, YouTube channel from the university. Uh, so if I if I need to post a, a video, so I, I have to submit the video to you or I can post it myself. You could, um, well, uh, you put it on your YouTube okay. and then once you have all the videos, all I have to do is add you um, onto the, the appropriate playlist on the program's YouTube is just one click. Okay. So if you have your stuff on YouTube already, you just share share that with me, and then I literally just go there, and there's a button that says uh, "Add to Playlist," and I add it to our playlist. And then anybody who comes to the program's YouTube can then have access to your YouTube videos. Okay. Is there a way to post uh, PDF files? via the Facebook? Um, I don't think so. I mean, you can you can post the link, the URL that's gonna, that, that you click on that, and then it takes you to the PDF. Oh, OK. Yeah. I'll give it a try, OK. OK. But we're almost up to date with our technology and our social media. <laughs> Thanks, Enrique. <laughs> Any anybody else have anything for the good of the aura? Okay, James. Yes, I, I had uh, one uh, contribution, uh, and that is um, uh, I'm retired now. But while I was working at Valley College, I had uh, you know the opportunity to help some of our graduates with employment. Actually, the person who who came into my position after I did uh, is a graduate, uh, Joanna Oxendine, oh, yeah. and um, and oh, of course, um, yeah. Olivia Rosas oh, yeah. is now Her the too. VP over there of uh, student Graduates. services. And so Our when alumni. I visit people, uh, one of the things that I find is that, you know, some of their SPSS skills have faded. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm basically a promoter of open source software. And, and uh, so I would, uh, I'm gonna put together a, a video on um, what's available in terms of open source and, and, and talk to faculty members here. It's really an equity issue on both ends. Uh, for, you know, I, I do tutoring of uh, some undergraduates and for, for people uh, to buy the um, student version of SPSS is sometimes a, a burden and, uh, and, and it's really unnecessary when open source, there's open source software that does as much and more than SPSS, the base package at least. Um, and so it's just the issue of becoming aware of these menu driven. Now, you know, at one point it was basically uh, kind of a, a, a script oriented program R, but now there are several menu driven um, and, and so the, the issue is equity for the, the students who are on the entry level so that they can have a tool long enough to really learn how to use it because SPSS 
you know, you can only install it on one machine. And as a student, you only get it for a certain limited period of time. But it's also an issue for people when they graduate because the places they go to work can't afford SPSS. And if you don't use it uh, when you need to, uh, you don't remember it. Yeah. So anyway, the-, the well, do you, We I'm have on the webpage, on our website, uh, we have uh, a section where we, we uh, uh, point out resources available to students. And, yeah. and so if you can put together a list of- I will, I'll resources. put together a list with a, a short video and uh, a, a, a set of links to tutorials and, uh, you know, because- There we go. Um, the, the issue with installing software is depends on whether you have a Apple based or a PC and what version of Windows you have. But there are uh, tutorials for each special application and in, and installing. So okay, anyway, so the, I'll do that. Yeah. So I, the I, good news you know, is that Stacy. I would like to do over the last two weeks. Stacy has uh, learned and has been granted the web page access to the web page. So we don't have to go through all the steps anymore. Stacy can uh, can add and edit the web page. So if you send it to Stacy, but copy at least me and well, Sharon and Catherine, but if you can get it to Stacy, we can figure out where it fits on the web page, and then good. And we can and, have uh, that for those people who are, you know, statistics oriented, I'd like to maybe do a, a short little intro to the use of their two very easy to use menu driven programs that do everything from descriptive statistics through um, structural equation modeling. Okay, and, so, here, so um, here's an idea. And Jane. They're, both, they're both free. Do you have access to record yourself? Yes, and I will. Okay, oh, so when you record yourself, we put it on the YouTube page. And then you, perfect, you send Stacy the sources. And then we can do an, send out an announcement like that. Great. And we can also include that as an orientation as one of the videos that they should watch. So it's great. And that Thank that you. does remind me, um, give me just 10 seconds, Nancy. We have, as of this summer, how many do we have, uh, Catherine? We have our new laptops all loaded up with all the software ready to go. So we just haven't announced it yet. We haven't gotten that far. Um, but uh, what's, um, Catherine, are you still with us? Yeah, I think there's 30 of them. So we have 30 laptops. They're all set up with everything possible that we think our students, with the software that we think they would most likely need access to. Thank you. So they can check these out. Yeah. Sorry, Nancy. Go ahead. No, um, I just wanted to, to, I think, reiterate or build on what Jane said. I think the opportunity, to, if it's at all possible, I don't want to volunteer you, James, and I don't want to volunteer the program, but what you just described, I think, is really an important asset, right? And it's something that can we leverage it as an uh, a well, uh, open house day where we have this workshop available to, to to potential people coming into the program and applicants or current students or like kind of like a, we used to do an open house back when it was Donna and, and Louis running the program uh, Edna and I would organize it and I think if we were to be able to have that and yes record the lecture right so that it stays as part of the the files accessible to everybody else but to have something possibly in person um, would be, I think, uh, a great asset. I know students are fearful of statistics. I know they finish the program and they're still intimidated by them. <laughs> uh, even thinking about, I use SPSS, James, but I don't know, I'm not familiar with any of the other programs because I'm so comfortable with SPSS, it's so easy for me. And I would never venture out. I think I opened R once and I was like, okay, this is not gonna work, you know? <laughs> so, but if it's something where um, it, is there a possibility, I think, to, to be strategic and to plan this out for the spring semester potentially? Um, if yeah, James I think um, maybe we'll invite you. We should invite oh. you to one of our meetings and have you. I'm sorry, you froze. I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. Um, 
uh, we'll invite you to a meeting so we can talk about that more, how we can get that um, get that open house going again. So yeah, I think that's a good we'll, idea. Have yeah, it is a great house. idea. We, we need to do that. So um, we meet on Wednesdays at 1130. So maybe one of those Wednesdays, you can come and talk with us about how to get that going again. Yeah, but I think this, like what James just talked about is what's really yeah. Um, yeah. important yeah. That, that other programs aren't doing. Right. Uh, their EDD or programs and, and we just need to some i wrote something a long time ago like 25 years ago but you know how they used to say um or maybe they still say i don't know the whole uh, publish or perish uh idiom so i proposed a um public or perish that the the future <laughs> of the academy is to go public right so we need our work needs to be public we're at a public university and we should be working on behalf of uh, like that that, that 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 idea that James and Nancy are referring to, but um, uh, like an open source or or uh, 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 kind of a community benefits approach or community mapping that we have access to all these resources. We just have to organize okay. it in a way that we can present it and. Um, it's kind of in line with maybe 15 years ago, there was a movement, teachers as researchers, you know, that teachers in the classroom, they can become researchers and they can do, they can do stuff, you know, it's not, we don't need to go to the ivory tower and, and talk to the fancy PhDs for research <laughs> that teachers can, you know, so it's the same idea that, that um, educational professionals can learn how to do their own research in a way that's of community benefit. Yeah, uh, it's really a great idea. And I think we, we really should, we'll follow up on that. See if we can't get something maybe going in the spring or early in the fall. Yeah, but I just want to like, th I think this is more to thank James for, for really volunteering yeah. to do some of this work. Cause I think this is what makes the program flourish, right? When faculty step up um, without having to and um, just all these resources that we each have uh, connections with. So I, I just want to acknowledge and appreciate that, James. Maybe James and, and you, Nancy, can collaborate and figure something out. And then we'll we'll back it with the labor and the resources. But if you guys can come up with some of the ideas. Uh, yeah. I could do that. We could bring in the qualitative stuff, the, the testimonial platicas the new oh, perfect yes methodology. that's what i use and in, in yes i can great. do that thank you nancy that's great and something that we can do is um uh last year i started the the media projects with the the, the lead stuff um and so uh we built a studio uh right now because of the flood it's being used to house things but in about three or four months and, and everything gets resolved, we have a studio that's accessible to us. And so there's nothing to say that we, um, if any of you all are interested in hosting an educational leadership video series where we, we don't have to pay thousands of dollars to bring someone in person, you can talk to them over Zoom or YouTube and you can record the session and and have a um, uh, and talk about you know, have conversations in equity, conversations in leadership, conversations in whatever, um, and it and it could be just as powerful as inviting a, a someone to come in person. So let me just well, follow uh, that up. Uh, Enrique. So like I have five guest speakers coming to the doctoral class. Wow. So. I should record them then? Yeah, if you want to record them, the easiest yes. thing to do is, um, and we can set it up for you, is we have the YouTube channel, we and we have YouTube Live is enabled on our EDD uh, YouTube. So um, uh, you just, we can set it up so that uh, you need, you know, you obviously you need a good camera um, and, uh, we could start off using the university's resources, but we could buy our own camera as a program and you all could borrow it. And as long as somebody knows how to do it, they, you can, they could do it over YouTube Live 
and we can watch it live and then that gets recorded and saved onto the YouTube channel. Yeah. Nancy, Most of them are Zoom, so that's easy to record. One is Dr. Miranda. Yeah, you can do that Zoom. Yeah, and you can do Zoom. And just person. send, send, you can send me um, you, the MP file, MP4, okay. MP4 file. Just one is in person, the superintendent from Colton, Dr. Miranda. So do I use my iPhone to record them on a tripod? Uh, I don't know. No, I guess if you that. have a good iPhone, you could do everything. You could do a whole movie on your iPhone if it's, <laughs> yeah. if it's a good one. I don't know how to do that, but I'll, yeah. I'll figure but it I, out. But Nancy had her hand up, and I'm sorry, yeah. Nancy. I think just one, ca a couple cautions about that. One is $125, like small little thank you to our guest speakers. Is that still the case, Catherine and Enrique Sharon? Do we still do that? I never heard of that. So I don't know if you're, I've never heard of that. We've been doing that since I started. So, and it's nothing big, but it counts, right? Because it's still usually an hour of their time. Um, and then secondly, I would caution us from recording these um, lectures. One, for sure, make sure they're aware of where you want to store them, what you want to do, and that you want to make them accessible. Because in these sessions, sometimes individuals will provide kind of off the record. My advisor, Danny, would say off the record off the record type of information that is super helpful for students. And I wouldn't be, what I say when something's being recorded is different than what I say when I'm working with students and uh, know that we're not gonna be recorded and accessible to everyone, especially when they're in the very much these, you know, politics, if they're in the administrative type of positions, I would caution us against recording these sessions and making them accessible to everyone. Um, and then two, I would also caution us against just uh, using them as like this, uh, like free labor when, um, if they're assistant professors or fact, people who are just starting out in the field and that little $125 does help them a lot, right? So that's a policy that we had. I, that, I used to think it was 150, so I would accidentally offer more. <laughs> and so Catherine was like, Nancy, it's 125. And I'm like, oh, yeah. shoot. Okay. So I learned I, I never heard I never heard of that. I'm not necessarily no, but we'll talk to it, but about I don't know it anything about it. It's a good it's um yeah. but the problem we, we have to make sure that, that we can't pay them after the fact, right? I mean, don't they have no, to sign the after the fact? Yeah, they would be they would be considered independent contractors and the rules on them are so strict and they, they become <laughs> even more strict. So um I would really I mean it it I would really, I would talk to us before you even offer them anything because we have to have their signature before they appear. We have mm -hmm. to have a contract before they actually show up in class. Mm -hmm. so, and they can't be associated in any way with any CSU. <laughs> That's the number one rule. So kind of limits it. But we'll talk about it. We, we, we will talk about it. We could talk about it and make Catherine, maybe, or Nancy. We'll put it can, on our next agenda. Yeah, you know? I, don't, I don't know. I've never heard of it, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, that's how I would bring in. I mean, it would it would help just as a, as an actual thank you for like Enrique Aleman and Dave Stovall have been Zoom speakers in the past, and and the the I would have never recorded those to have accessible to other folks because of what was shared. But the the value that is shared to our students in that cohort, and it's open to. I think the rule was Catherine that it had to be announced to all cohorts. And that way, all of them able to attend if they wanted to. That's what that was the difference. Um, and when, from what I, I mean, that's what we put into practice since I've been here. I don't know where it came from. I just know I would use that that little hundred and twenty five for my guest lectures. This is a small thank you. Okay. All righty. Yeah, and it's up to the instructor if they want to record or not. But it's. It, we have no formal policy. It's like, if you want something on a YouTube channel, it's there. You all decide what you want to do, if you want it, at, if at all. But I think it's fair, Nancy, that if you are going to record somebody, they need to know that up front. So, and that, where we're going to put it. So they, you know, they're not surprised at some point in time. Yeah. And if they want to say like, all right, let's hit pause real quick. And now let me give you some yeah. info. Let me that tell you the real story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay anything else from anybody it's a good meeting thank you all for coming and um for participating we had about 19 or 20 participants and that's really um that's 
fabulous. I, I'm, I, I'm so happy that you're engaged and we're so pleased that you attend meetings and, and participate on committees. So thank you so very, very much. And um, have a, we'll see you next, we'll see you next month. Bye. Yeah.